After much planning and anticipation, we are now packed and ready to go. There's my car service. Are you getting ready for your beautiful Nepal trip? We are. Are you so excited? We are. Did thank, you go for I, a run this morning? Uh, we did went for a hike this morning. Oh, nice. But thank you for picking us up. Yeah, for sure. LAX Lounge. Not too Our flight out is LAX to Newark. Newark to Istanbul with a seven hour layover. And then another long flight to Kathmandu. First flight, LAX Newark, uh, United Polaris, not too bad. Just got uh, dinner served to me with some uh, red wine. About another four hours left on this flight to Newark. The transition from United to Turkish was remarkable. We had our own chef, we had fantastic food and fantastic service. Istanbul Airport, stunning. A huge, beautiful, modern, uh, more than I'd ever expected uh, from Istanbul. Final flight segment, and out the out of the window, you can see these gorgeous mountains. Bye -bye. Here we are. Made it. So after almost 30 hours of travel, we've made it. We go through immigration, then we get out, and we find the familiar face of Rajan, who will be with us for several weeks. So I guess we got a COVID spray down on the way into the hotel. The room just had the bags delivered. So we've got a really nice, comfortable room. It's a little bit of an upgrade from the, from the Makalu. Our gear sort, getting ready for the trek. We had stuff everywhere in the hotel, but managed to pack it all away into the correct duffels. Our guide, Devi, morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> and this is Rajan. He's our fixer, helps us out with everything. So we are ready to, to get on the bus and head out. I'm waiting for the uh, airport doors to open. Of course, Rajan already took our bags, and went around the back. <laughs> so that's why he's our fixer. So we've got all the trekkers in the front here, and it's actually ready to go. And we've got trekkers all the way back here as well. So Far from what you would consider a commercial flight, this is our flight into Lukla, one of the scariest airports in the world. So we're kind of packed in. It's all good though. Everyone's found a seat and we're on our way. Poking my GoPro through the uh, curtain there into the cockpit as we come in to land in Lukla. So welcome to Lukla. Just landed. Bags arrived. We are good. Nice. So I haven't been in here in two two years. But you've been here. I've been here, yes. Hello. Lovely Good breakfast morning. here. Yeah. Good morning, namaste. Namaste, how are you? I am very good, thank good. you. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you after a long time. Long yeah. time, two years. Two years. Oh. you get it go. Super breakfast, great coffee. Nice being back in this place again. starting so starting in Lukla we pass through the different checkpoints to make sure we have the correct trekking permits and then it starts down a nice easy drop down trail to the very start of our trek Sachi making easy work of the first section this is just a little couple of tea houses right, right, right along the trail down from Lukla. Devi just asked how much this guy is carrying and uh, 
This guy said 105 kilos is what he's walking up the trail with. Installation of new internet cables all the way up through wow. the valley. You can't keep technology down. Traffic jam. Yeah, be careful. Yep, yep. The first of the prayer wheels. We'll be having prayer wheels for two weeks from now. Oh my god, there's more. <laughs> At this point, the trail is very well maintained. It gets worse as we go. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. We're not even scared yet. We're not, we're not over a river yet. There you go, sweetheart. See our lunch cooked. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Fried rice. <laughs> Looks good. <Yeah. laughs> look at that. Mm. Just little burners in the What a spectacular first day coming into the Kombu and uh, trekking from uh, Lukla to Monjo. Sachko seeing the first of the trail. The trails are really nice at this point, very well maintained because it's the way of commerce throughout the valley. So we, uh, we trekked along, had lunch, um, enjoyed that tremendously, and then sort of crossed multiple, multiple bridges and the river several times and uh, headed up to Manjo, which was our final spot for the evening where we enjoyed a really nice tea house uh, good food, comfortable beds, and uh, warmth for the night. Ramonjo, looks like that's our tea hut for the night. Buddha Lodge and Restaurant. Looked at the rooms pretty nice up here so we're coming into sort of the boarding house area and we have chosen a room thank you Solomon yeah. welcome. Okay, thank you welcome yeah this one uh -huh. all the way in thank you Debbie you're welcome thank you look at that we've got a cute little room here a couple uh -huh. beds comforters beautiful yeah. view mm -hmm, nice view good yeah yeah so after lunch, we enjoyed a fairly easy trek uh, for just a few miles um, up to our tea house for the night. Uh, beautiful scenery, amazing crossing all the rivers and just wonderful to see everything out in the trail. Of course, you have everything from yaks to cows to mules and donkeys on the trail. So it just makes it an interesting mode of travel. We got up at four o'clock in the morning and we had to meet our guide um, at five o'clock in the lobby. We got on the, on the, uh, in the van, went to the airport and we have a fixer who would just take our bags and disappears and comes back with a ticket and kind of like smooth us in. 
Um, our flight left at 6.15. Right on time, so we had no weather problems. Yeah, no like. weather problem. Uh, we landed less than 40 minutes, I think. But yeah. It wasn't that exciting a flight, was it? No. No, it and was And it wasn't okay. that scary either. I mean, although, actually, when you land and make a, a right, it's it's probably not even 50 yard. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, Had breakfast in Lukla at Paradise, which was lovely. Uh huh. And then we started our trek to uh, Manjo. So we went, we, we uh, went up through up Hecting. Uh huh. And it was an up, up and down. So total, total elevation change is not much, but. And the elevation actually went, we ended up lower than Lukla. But there was a lot I of mean, up that and was down. Like. like like this, and we saw a tremendous amount of donkeys and some cows. I mean, donkeys after donkeys going both directions. So, yeah, how'd you feel? I feel great. You did really good on all the rocks, you did good on the bridges. I, I only full, fell yeah. once. I, oops, no, keep going. Oh, I only tripped once. So, we're gonna start counting how many times I trip and yeah, fall. Such good fall. Trip. So, yeah. she hasn't, fall. yeah. So then we got into Manjo and uh, we've been checking out rooms because a lot of places are not open. Uh, so we found a place here. It's really nice. I think we're the only people staying here. <laughs> the, the trail's quiet, uh, but we've got a nice room upstairs with a beautiful. Right, Manjo, quite comfortable. We're starting our trek this morning. First up will be Namchi. Uh, see right in front of us is a little monastery up on the hill there with the prayer flags. Uh, it's chilly this morning, but not horribly cold. It was uh, below freezing last night. We woke up, there was frost on everything outside. Here we go. We are now in. That's it. I got confident she's getting down the bridges. Roaring River, probably 200, 200 plus feet, yeah, at least 200 feet below. If you come around the corner, you see two bridges. You have the old bridge on the bottom and the new bridge on the top. Probably the highest bridge we've uh, encountered so far so up the walkway and over that bridge so tallest bridge that we navigate in the entire trek it's well over 500 feet down there oh there's donkeys do you want to go back yeah let's go back Yeah. All the way from the river bottom and uh, reward at the top here with our first glimpse of Everest between the trees. So pretty cool, but mm -hmm. oh, what'd you think of the climb? It was relentless, but uh... I think there's more coming, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have. So this was Monjo, first up to Namchi, and uh, up to Namchi Bazaar, we dropped down to the river, again crossing multiple bridges, and then after this big bridge crossing, we had the long, long uphill, 
and I do remember that, but it was probably 90 minutes of just a grind uphill. Halfway up, we did get to see um, Everest, which was our first glimpse, which was fantastic. But uh, just a long grind all the way up to get to Namchi, which is where we stopped, had lunch, did a little shopping, uh, bought a new charger for my phone that I'd forgotten, but you can buy anything in Namchi. Above Namchi, after lunch, heading our way. So we've got this beautiful view up here. And now, she is up there in all the glory. Look, we've got the stupa in the front, the Amadablin in the back. It's kind of surreal to think that two years ago in November, I stood on top of that beast. Uh, it's quite amazing to look at it right now. After lunch in Namchi, we realized that it was still uphill. So we had a nice long uphill and then ended up with a nice gradual downhill after our first views of Amadablum from the top. I recall these from last time I was there. It's quite stunning to just stand on the trail and see these amazing Himalayan peaks. We ended up with a nice little downhill trek into Kanjama where we spent a lovely night. Hello. This is our more typical tea house. Last night we were solo, but this is community. We've got people from different countries, different places, all gathered in this wonderful tea house around the fire, eating dinner, swapping stories. Here's Debbie down here. Hey, it's Solomon. He's, done, God, he's got a rest day tomorrow. So this is where our lovely dinner came from. This is Tashi. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it was so good. Thank you very much. Actually, she, she's a chef. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you. So I just came to see where dinner came from. Yeah, right. Thank you. Everyone. Hey. Oh, okay. yes. Hello. Hello. Namaste. Hello. Okay. Well, I have to go to my room first. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're <delightful. laughs> She's such a sweetheart. <laughs> Morning. We're going on a climatization hike up to uh, Kamchang and Everest View Hotel. Yeah, Kamchang Village. Beautiful. Yeah, lots of buildings. Got the stupa, we got Lotse right there. And then the Maybe is that Everest right there? I think so. Is that Everest right there? Yes. There? We can see a little bit. Yes. We can see a little bit of Everest yeah. right and there next to Lotse, yeah. huh? The Everest View Hotel, so just a hour and 15 minute trek. Sachi and Devi. And it just couldn't be better. Last time I was here, I couldn't see Everest, it was all cloudy. Heading down from the Everest View Hotel after some tea and a nice little rest we walk into the little village of Kamjum. Good morning. Oh, it's all the huh? So Kamjong is the home of the Tenzang Norge and Edmund Hillary School and hospital. They gave back so much after they managed to summon Everest and become famous doing so, they gave back to the community. 
Hillary. This is the tribute to Tenzing and Edmund at the school. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Stunning views of Alpen Glow at sunset from the lodge. It was a nice, easy day. We went up to Kamjang. We visited the Everest View Hotel, um, the school up there, the monastery up there. It was really nice. We gained some altitude, which was good for acclimatization. But uh, honestly, it was just a really nice day uh, to spend and enjoy. Uh, in this amazing scenery. This is the closest you can get to leaving family. Leaving Lakpa and Tashi was hard, but gosh, they were fantastic hosts. Namaste. Namaste. Okay, from the lodge this morning, that was 1.6 miles of straight downhill, which might be nice, except it was really rocky, kind of technical the whole way down. So kind of a knee beater, but we made it down. Now we've got another bridge. This will be the first bridge of the day for us to go across. Bridge. The river below. And it's the rest of the bridge. Sachi's already across. Maybe he's ahead of me. Phew. Okay, we made it to Tangboshi. That was a pretty relentless uphill slog. Okay. What the hell? Well, we went all the way down to the river. Yeah. And we climbed all the way bloody back out. Oh, it's a beautiful there. little yes, village. Beautiful Look, here. isn't that nice? Apparently, the bakery in Tambashi makes amazing apple pie. How decorated it is. Exploring the monastery in Tengbashi. It's beautiful, amazing, and remote. What a change of scenery from all those fir trees. We just dropped out of Tengbashi where we had lunch. And now we're going down the path. This is the rhododendron forest. Unfortunately, it's not flowering in now this time of year. Here, so that they don't kill you, know? Right, right. Any kinds of animals. There's another one there, there's a big, so the big bark up on top, look. Yeah. So it's a perfectly good big wide trail down to our right. But, we have to go this way. We have to go that way so we can pass to the left of the rock. Regular trail now. And this is a nice little drop down to Pangboche. Where we're gonna spend the night tonight. And tomorrow, we're gonna go up the opposite bank and visit Amadablan base camp. So it's the cousin of Tashi. <laughs> It's a little rustic upstairs, especially. But Sachi's made herself at home in the corner. 
So Kanjama to Pangbashi started out nice and easy. A nice little downhill trek. Always foreboding when you go downhill for several hours because then we had to make the hike up to Tengbashi and that was a really steep, long, arduous hike. Tengbashi was great. They've got a fabulous bakery, so Sachi had apple pie. Then we went and explored the monastery, which was absolutely fantastic, before dropping down in elevation. Um, finding some amazing wildlife out there. We saw these tar, these uh, mountain goats uh, up in there, which were just extraordinary. I'd never seen them before, but that was fantastic to discover those on our, on our hike. Okay, let's start again. <laughs> Take three. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> we forgot to do our daily thingy for the last three days. So we're going to try to catch up. Today is November 14th. Um, is it a Monday? It's on Sunday. Sunday. Um, so we're going to go back three days to uh, November 12th. And we went from... Manjo. Manjo. Through Namche Bazaar. Through Namche Bazaar to Kinju... Kanjama. Kinjama. Oh, okay. You can kind of like... Okay, so uh, Manjo was fine. We crossed through the gate there into Sangamatha National Park. Um, and it was a nice long downhill, uh, which was foreboding because we knew there would be uphill. We went across the biggest bridge down there. And then it was the never ending climb. But about halfway up, we stopped and we got a beautiful view. Your first view ever of Everest. Oh, that's right. Yeah. What'd you think? Everest is not very um, exciting to look at. Like when you compare it with Amadablam, which is just, just up and it's by itself. Everest is like, a, it's right there. But to me, it's like, whatever, you know? Uh, okay. I know it's high, but yep. yeah. So it was a slog up through Namche. Uh, it was hard. Um, got up to Namche, had a great lunch there. Really, really nice lunch, mm -hmm. bunch of tea. And then we moved oh. on after that and found out there was more uphill. <laughs> yes. And then uh, we eventually got on this and we turned the corner. And as we turned the corner was our very first glimpse of Amadablam. Yeah. That was exciting. Pretty, cr pretty I know crazy. You climbed it, yeah. It's kind of crazy. So, and, uh, so that was really good, actually. So we did that and then we um, dropped down to Kanjama and welcomed by Tashi and Kama. And it was a splendid night there. Really good, really good, wonderful people. I mean, really nice place to stay. Yep. I mean, it was clean and and big and yeah, nice compared to this one. Next day. Okay, next day, uh, the thirteenth. We uh, it was our kind of a, a rest day supposedly, so we climbed up to. Uh, Everest View Hotel, which is supposed to be the uh, highest hotel in the world, um, at 30, 30 eight, 80, 80 meters. meters. I don't know what that is in feet, but um, really beautiful view and kind of um, Nepali here, I guess, mountain standards, really nice plush hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they even had Japanese breakfast. So I think a lot of Japanese stay there. They fly in on helicopters, have breakfast, and say they've been there and go home. Yeah. And then, and then we spent the, the rest of the morning in uh, Kan... Kanjuma? Kanju, no, not Kanjuma. Oh, God. Kayama? Yes. No, Kanjuma. Yeah, you're right. Kanjuma. Yeah, Kayama. After, yes, yeah, Kanjuma, yeah. sorry. And then uh, we went around the... Um, the Edmund Hillary. Yes, it's it's Kumba, no Kum. Kumjung, oh Kumjung, Kumjung. <laughs> That's it. It's the Kumjung, Kumjung. <laughs> so we went no, I and think we. It's Kanjuma. No, Kanjuma is where we stay. Kum, oh. The Kumjung is the reason where the school is. Okay. So that's the Edmund Hillary School. We visited the school. That was really cool to see. Mm -hmm. We went up to the monastery. That was cool. Um, we went around all the stones and. That was cool. 
-hmm. It was neat. It was a nice little day hike. Yeah, huh? that was a, it was a nice day. It's a nice day. day. Nice day. Got back down to the lodge, uh, to tea house last night. Um, and there were more people And it there. was great. <laughs> it was great Look, to chat Americans, with people. Americans, uh, you know. Yeah. So we got to chat. Okay, good morning. We are leaving Pangboche and heading up to Amadablam base camp this morning. So we're heading up that way. Popped out from the switchbacks, up from the river. So we just climbed from down there, up these switchbacks. Okay, we're now on a bit of a traverse. But what's nice is we've got Pomori peering over the little ridge right there, that little saddle that's Pomori. On top of the ridge. And you'll see we've got a lodge down here. And uh, at least one base camp set up all the way down here at the lodge. That's not... Okay, we're at 15,200. After that long climb up, we are at last inside of Tim's base camp. Looks just like I remember. Same layout, looks just like I remember it. Right there, dining tent, supply tent. So happy to be back. Follow the bouncing finger. So behind the big rock pile there is advanced base camp. Coming up the ridge, you'll see a little lump up there, which is camp one. Then beyond that, you come up to the yellow tower, which is 40 to 60 foot sheer tower face to a tiny camp, which is camp two. In the morning there, you go up the gray couloir, a crossed mushroom ridge to mushroom rock. Then you go up on the right side of that um, serac, cut across to the center, and then all the way up to the top. Okay, so we have a fantastic meet and greet with Tim and Dorji, and we had a great lunch. And now, and that was at like 15, thousand three hundred feet and now we're heading back down to Pangboshi. What an amazing day this was being able to travel back up to uh, Amadablan base camp to be able to connect with my my friends up there as well have lunch with Tim and the team um, just amazing to be able to take Sachko up there tough hike up to fifteen thousand three hundred feet uh, but we did both did really well had a great lunch enjoyed it Sachi got to see where i stayed for several weeks and sort of understand what it was to climb that mountain so i was really really happy to be able to do that with her Okay, update. Yesterday. Yes, good morning. Uh, we forgot to do one yesterday, <laughs> so we're going to catch up. We went to Amadablam Base Camp yesterday, and that was our goal number one achieved, and we're so happy. Um, it was, uh, like I said, 98% uphill going over there. Um, the first glance of the, the base camp, I was like, oh my God, we got here. And then John says, no, 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 it's not there. Tim's place is over the ridge. I went, <laughs> oh, okay. So it was like another half hour, probably another, uh, I don't know, 50 feet of gain or something. 50, keep going. Anyway, we, oh, we, anyway. we went up to 15,300 yesterday from about 20 to uh, 12,900. So we got a good uh, push for acclimatization yesterday. 
It was great to see Tim and uh, Dodgy, and we had a wonderful lunch up there. They served us lunch. Uh, it was great to reminisce around base camp and mm -hmm. show Sachi what base camp looked like where I lived for three weeks. So that was great. And then we cruised back down last night. Yep. And then we had dinner, and then I got served some homemade alcohol stuff <laughs> that tastes they like shoju. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty evil, but it was good. Just left the river behind to the right a little bit. Nobody looks happy coming down. What the hell? <laughs> we just passed some hikers on the way down. Everyone looked pissed off. Okay, still cruising along here, nice and easy. Pretty flat. And then you look over there. Looks like we drop down into the bottom. I see a bridge. And then I see the climb going on up there, around there. So I'm guessing that's our route where we're going. Okay, so we just climbed up from the river bottom, but after yesterday, how was that? Well, I feel pretty good. I don't think it was that hard. Right. I mean, it was much shorter, so. Okay, this is our little place we're staying, the Moonlight Lodge. Another beautiful little tea house. We just arrived after a nice, easy hike, just a little less than three hours. How many miles was it? Oh, four miles, like three hours. Yeah, nice and easy. So we've got a beautiful room here and we just came upstairs to check out the tea house itself. So Pangbashi to Dingbashi was a fairly benign hike. It was pretty easy. Uh, we had a little bit of uphill, we had some switchbacks across the other side of the river, but honestly, this was a pretty easy day, which was nice because we've been working hard uh, previously up to this, including yesterday with the Amadablam hike. So it was nice to have uh, a relatively easy day out. Good morning. We're going to update update from yesterday. Oh, uh, good morning. <laughs> uh, yesterday was from Pimbo Pimboche to Dingboche. Dingboche, and it was exactly four miles. It was relatively flat. Um, the guy told us it was going to be like a five hour, four or five hours, and it took us. Two hours and 45 minutes. Easily cruising, cruising. Well, because we didn't stop for lunch. You know, we didn't break yeah. at all. So anyway, so we had almost the rest of the whole day yep. here. We took a little walk in town. Um, John bought Everest whiskey. It's gone. He said it didn't taste good, but drank it anyway. It's gone. Me and my guy <laughs> drank it. We drank it together. Yeah, so we're in this little, little place in Dingbashi. It's really nice. Cute. We've got beautiful views. It was uh, pretty chilly last night, but we're, we're good. We were we warm. We got a king size bed for the first time on this trip. Yeah. And then today we're going for a nice little day hike. Uh, hike uh, high, sleep low. And we're here again for dinner tonight. And then tomorrow we go up to a Lobochet. Ding Boche. Just waking up. You can see the smoke from the yak fires. There's Island Peak in the background there. That's the pointy one on the right. That's where we were staying down there, the one with the, you can see with a lot of smoke coming up. That's where we stayed last night. And we'll be tonight coming around. We've got a stupa below us. I'm standing right next to one here. So absolutely glorious morning. This is just a day hike for acclimatization. But still, pretty stunning, huh? We're at that little hut. Little, uh, little monastery, I guess. It's quite, it's just amazing what they build up in these places. Look at this, those are four by fours. Mm. Two, mm. four, six, eight, ten four by fours. 
Um, Sachi's been haggling and negotiating in this little store. And here's all the hats hanging up in here. So she's got all of these and went through all of them for you. So today's hike was really an acclimatization hike. The idea was to sleep at a lower altitude, push our bodies a little bit and get up to a higher altitude uh, to spur us with that acclimatization. It was great. It was nice just to get up on the ridge there, see the sights, um, explore a really interesting uh, little monastery up there as well, and just have a relatively easy day, get back down nice and early, manage to do some shopping, and have a little fun, get back and relax at the tea house in the afternoon. So super day in uh, Dengbashi. Okay, so it's day eight. We're heading up to La uh, We're at you know, 40, 14, 5, 14, 6, I think, right now. Heading up, this is a, the nicest, flattest hike we've had so far. This is really pleasant. Coming up, we see again the magnificent clouds this morning. It's just gorgeous out this morning. Couldn't be nicer. So I've been hiking not mm, two hours or so. We're over 15,000 again. That's the small town of Tukla over there. And I guess we're going to stop at Tukla for a little while. Across this is the bridge washed out. So we've got a little bit of scrambling to do. Sachi's cussing right now at this bridge. Sachi was not very impressed with this bridge. I held her hand all the way across, but she did great. I guess because you've got a shitty little bridge and this torrent underneath down here, look. But here she goes, she's going down through the rocks. Climb up to the top of the ridge there. So, 45 minutes. Oh, then there's the memorials at the top, etc. So we'll stop there for a little while. Memorials are from folks who have died on Everest. So I'm going to take a little look around. So these are the memorials of some of my sort of heroes in climbing. Rob Hall, Scott Fisher, Anatoly Bukhrev. Uh, quite moving for me to actually spend time there. Uh, where the so memorials are today. Up here. And there's not another soul out here. I mean, you can look all around this valley look not one other person but anyway we made it uh, our place is another 30 minutes walk so we might take a sip of water and uh, half a candy bar around the corner this is where we're staying tonight unbelievable this pyramid in the middle of the mountains. Look at this. Look up there. There's a huge glacier right there coming down. And then you've got a research center and pyramid. Actually wood panels, which is nice. There's a heater here. That hasn't worked in five years, which is nice. Uh, but we got lights and everything, and it's actually quite comfortable. We got plenty of bedding in here. Ding Bashi Labashe, a uh, six plus mile day at altitude is quite a push. Um, it felt like a longer day than it probably was. It started out really nice and flat and easy. Um, and we had a really nice time starting out. It just got a little bit tougher as the day went on. We had the, the hike up to the memorials and the switchbacks, and then we had some more altitude gain along the moraine there uh, to our tea hut, 
when we came across the laboratory and the pyramid tea hut oh my gosh just quite an amazing sight uh, to be able to see in the middle of in the middle of nowhere at 16,000 plus feet uh, to come across such a stunning location to stay at so this was a long day a hard day but a very rewarding day too go honey Okay, it's November 18. I don't know what the, the week it is anymore, but uh, we hiked from Dingboche to Lobuche mm -hmm. via Tulak, 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 <laughs> uh, something, I don't know. But <laughs> it was, uh, it was long. It was uh, only about 4.5 miles, is it? No, it was almost six months. Oh, that's today. right. Mine, yeah, 4.5 hours. Um, like six point something miles. And um, we had to pass Le Boucher to come to this pyramid hotel that uh, was highly recommended. Yeah, it's a research laboratory that also houses people, so it's pretty cool. Pretty um, interesting. We got a, a little tour, but we were misled because they said that they have a heater in every room. So. Well, they do have a heater. It's it not, just doesn't work. It hasn't worked for five years. Yeah, but they do have a heater in every room. <laughs> I mean, I was so looking forward to having a nice warm heater in the room all night, but that was not going to happen. Yeah, it was a long hike today. And we, were, we were up over 14,500 all day. We're at 16,200 right now. Dinner was good. but um, Yeah, food is good. I'm telling you, coming in here after five and a half hours, I was ready to sit my butt down today. Yes. But yeah, we, anyway, we yeah. didn't eat lunch. We came straight over here. So I think you're hungry and giddy. Oh, grouchy. <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're tucked in here tonight. It seems really pleasant. And we're going to Gorak Shep tomorrow. Correct. It's like the coldest place on this trip. Yep. So we'll do that tomorrow. We'll see okay. how it is. We'll check in with you. See ya. up to Gorap Shep. We leave this beautiful place, the big glacier right there, the pyramid and the research laboratory. So first day we haven't had blue skies, but you can see the mountains in the distance. Uh, they've got snow falling over there and clouds. Right in front of us there, you can see the switchbacks. They don't look too too high. So up those switchbacks, we just broke the 17,000 foot mark. So over 17K. We're both feeling really good still. 17,000, how was it, honey? <laughs> how was it? Well, it was like going up the switchbacks uh, of Clown Shell. What is that place called? Oh, yeah. You know, after the the bench. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, God, going up the fire break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah, you feel good? Ready? Yeah, I feel I feel better now. I didn't feel too good last night. And I didn't get you know, a really good sleep, but I'm good now. Thanks. This is the Kumbu Glacier as it flows down from the mountain. And you can see it's coming down through here. Totally broken up. We just let these guys pass us right now and then saw one of them quickly fall on his ass. So that was perfect. So the weather isn't doing us any good right now. It's little snow flurries and pick of the winds picking up. But we come around the corner. Kalapatar is just behind this guy right here. But that's Gorak Shep right there. So we made it to Gorak Shep. So Labashe, Gorak Shep, another short day. Uh, it was cold. Uh, we were at altitude. It was fairly short. It was not a hard hike, but coming across the Kumbu um, Glacier and actually walking on the glacier itself was, was quite special. Um, you know, and 
It did wear us out a little bit, but not too bad. We got there in time for a nice lunch and in time so that we could go uh, give base camp a shot in the afternoon. Okay, the weather cleared slightly. We've got a break in the clouds. Uh, the wind died down, which is the important one. To our left is the trail up to Kalapatar. But we're going to go and uh, give it a go for base camp right now. On the way down, it's the only person we've seen on the trail. And they said it is very cold and very windy. It's pretty freaking amazing out here. Unbelievable. Whew, a little break. But there they are. Continue along the ridge. I'll see if I can catch up with them. And this camp's just right over there. You can see a couple of prayer, prayer flags. Difficult to see in this camera, but uh, it's just sort of on the other side. This camp, we made it. So this is the remnants of base camp. And against popular belief, this place is really clean. Yeah, you've got some prayer flags every now and again, but there's no trash. No oxygen bottles laying around, as people say there are. People call it a, a waste dump. I'm not seeing any trash anywhere, just prayer flags. So it's kind of well looked after here. From Never's Place Camp. above us here and all the way back a little bit of Everest right there between the background you can see that huge peak that you can see the vastness of the Kambu glacier it's just enormous it fills this whole Kambu valley of course sun setting over the mountains and we are back to Gorapshep so despite the weather we had heavy clouds um, high wind we thought we were there early enough that we could give this a shot. So we went from Gorak Shep to head up to Everest Base Camp. Uh, stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, we lucked out on the weather. The further we hiked, the clearer it got. Uh, the wind settled down. We got up to Everest Base Camp. We accomplished that goal. I saw the Kumbu ice fall. I could see everything that I ever wanted to experience there at Base Camp. And uh, on the way out, the, uh, the skies cleared, um, we saw blue sky, we got to see Everest, Lhotse, uh, Napse, all of the major peaks and experience a beautiful sunset. Go to Gorak Shep from Loboshe, Loboshe, which we did. It was about, I think, three miles, less than three miles. Um, it took us two hours and 45 minutes or something like that. And then we got here uh, so early. Yeah, so it was a good trek. It was nice and flat and easy at the bottom. Then we had some switchbacks and uh, a little bit of a climb up here. Yeah. So we climbed up to 17,000 feet, which was where we are now at Gorak Shep, mm. and checked into the little tea house here. Kind of an uneventful hike, but it was pretty good. And then, um, the weather really was kicking in yesterday. It was uh, really overcast. It was the first day we had, which was all clouds. So clouds and windy. And uh, we were debating, do we, what do we do? But we went for it and we went up to Everest Base Camp yesterday. Yeah, instead of doing it today, we went yesterday, which was a, uh, a good choice because today it's really like cold, snowy, no visibility and... 
So anyway, we made it yesterday. Yay! Yep. So we went <clears> up and a lot of people were coming down. People turned around because of the wind. We got up there. There wasn't much of a view of the mountains because of the clouds. But I'm telling you, it all parted as we were up there. Mm -hmm. We got to see Everest. We got to base camp. We got to see everything that we wanted to. It was a pretty awesome hike. It was a long, it felt long coming back, though. Yeah, yeah. John had it at the end of it. <laughs> End of it. He was getting a little grouchy. I was getting a little grumpy. <laughs> so anyway, but that was a good day. And today we're going to see what we're going to do. Okay. All right. Bye. Update over. It's cleared a little bit. And while it's really cold and potentially very windy, we are going to go up this trail up here and see if we can climb Kalapata. So we're continuing up the first little part but as we spin over there's Everest right there look at that beautiful right poking its head out of the clouds. Sachi coming up all good okay don't know if it shows on the camera but it's officially snowing right now So here we are on top of uh, Kalapata. There's the drop down to the side. There's Sachi. There's Devi. And the clouds have come in. So. That's cold, but no windy. Yeah, I'm not really that cold either. Ever decide to pop out for a quick goodbye. So this is actually the last little bit of our trek. We're done walking for this trek and there is Gorak Shep. And this is us just finishing off our Karapata hike. It's uh, sunset, sun's down, and uh, we've just got a few hundred meters to go before we hit the bottom and then it's uh, time for us to pack up have some dinner so Kalapata is 18,500 feet so it would be the highest spot that we had trekked this entire trip again we had really bad cloud cover in the morning but as the day wore on uh, the blue sky slowly came through and we got to see amazing views of the Himalaya we got to see all of the tallest mountains and the tallest mountain on the planet. Um, we sat up there at 18,500 feet, opened a nice thermos of, of tea, enjoyed a drink and, uh, and the scenery before heading back down to Gorak Shep for the night and, uh, and starting to pack up. spectacular parts of the trip for me was to jump in the A star from Gorak Shep. The pilot then took the bird out over the Kumbu Glacier and flew directly down the glacier to Lukla. This was the most incredible flight I think I've ever experienced and it was absolutely fabulous. It was a great way to end. It got us out four to five days quicker than having to hike out. And honestly, the views and what we saw on the way out were well worth it. What a fantastic trip.